Dear students, let me continue with radio propagation. In yesterday's lecture, we studied the tropospheric wave and sky wave propagation in online as well as offline lecture. We are going to extend the aspect of sky wave communication further in which we are going to study concept of virtual height and disk distance. Virtual height meaning thereby Abhasi Unchi Virtual Abhasi Nastana Dizane Telapan Abhasi as the Manto. That is called as the virtual height. <coughs> virtual height is the height from which the wave sent up at an angle appears to be reflected from the layer in the ionosphere. It is the height <coughs> of ionosphere at which sky waves seems to be <coughs> reflected, appears to be reflected. It is the height from which the waves sent up at an angle appears to be reflected. Ja height or electromagnetic energy antenna person radiate hote tharavik angle cross karun I know sperm the gala nanta. Aplala reflect Zalazar ki baste. Ti particular unchi jalapan virtual height asamanta. Which is represented here. Friends, this is the ground surface and this is the ionospheric layer, ionized layer. We are well aware that during daytime D, E, F1, F2 layers are existing at a height 50 km, 90 km, 200 km and 350 km. During daytime F1 and F2 are merged together to form F layer but D layer is absent and E layer is converted into spheroidic A layer. These layers are created because of ultraviolet radiations which are entering from the emitted from the sun and ionizes the gas molecules into electrons and positive ions. Those positive ions forms the layers and when radiation is emitted from the transmitting antenna reaches to, the, reaches to the topmost layer of ionosphere and it appears to be reflected. Means if suppose here is a transmitting antenna, wave radiated by it reaches to the topest layer and after that it seems to be reflected, appears to be reflected, but it actually not true. Actually it is going to attain only this much height <coughs> and after that it is being reflected. So this is the actual height, this one is the virtual height. Actually, if the wave radiates and enters into the ionosphere, maybe from here it will escape the ionospheric layer, but it appears to be reflected. So that appearance at which at height, height at which it appears, that height we can call it as it is the virtual height, which is represented here. This one is the actual height, whereas this one is the virtual height. In the figure, it is clear that virtual height is more than that of the actual height. When transmitting antenna transmit the waves, incident at an angle reaches to the ionosphere, takes a curved path after reflection to, the, to reach the receiver. This represents the actual height of the layer. So this is what actually it is occurring. But when transmitting and receiving antenna are placed at the same place 
and able to transmit and receive the wave after being reflected from the ionospheric layer. At the same point, on the Earth's surface, height appears to be more and that is known as virtual height. If suppose transmitting and receiving antenna are placed at the same point, the wave is radiated from the same point and it is received at the same point, then that height is more than that of the actual height. That height you can call it as it is the virtual height. Thus we can say virtual height is a projected height of the ionized layer. Virtual height is projected height. After projection, whatever height it appears, that height we can call it as it is the virtual height. Student so friends, this is what the concept of the virtual height which we can explain. Now next <coughs> we have to proceed for understanding of the concept of the skip distance. Meaning of skip distance. In ionospheric propagation of radio wave, it depends upon signal frequency and angle of incidence. Means the reflection of sky waves from the ionospheric layer, it depends upon the frequency and angle of incidence. As yesterday I told you that if the conditions are made favorable in the ionospheric region, so that they are going to reflect. It depends upon day to day, time to time, season to season, year to year, conditions in the ionosphere may decide. Along with that, the reflection of the sky wave is also going to depend upon the frequency transmitted by the transmitter and also the angle at which the radiations are going to be incident to the ionospheric layer. So angle of incidence also plays a very vital role as far as the reflection of sky waves are being considered. For large angle of incidence, wave penetrates ionosphere more and more and more and can be used as a microwave for satellite communication. Look at here. So these are the two radiations which are represented. That makes an angle <coughs> this much to the earth's surface. As angle is more, the wave escapes the ionospheric layer, penetrates the ionospheric layer and reaches to this space and those are used as a microwave radiations for satellite communication. So these are the radiations which are represented. So this is the ionospheric layer, this is <coughs> <coughs> our surface, this one is a transmitting antenna. From transmitting antenna, the electromagnetic energy is radiated. Suppose angle made by electromagnetic radiation to the earth's surface is much more, this is the angle, if it is more, then they will be escaped from the ionospheric layer and reaches to the space and going to act as micro radiations. The distance from transmitter to the point where wave is received back on the earth becomes smaller. Further reducing the angle of incidence, increase in distance between transmitting and receiving point. As you go on decreasing the angle of incidence, this is the angle for this radiation, we are reducing the angle further, we are reducing the angle, if you get this wave, the distance covered will be this much, look at here. For this radiation, the angle of incidence is this much, angle is reduced, the distance covered will be this much. If angle is further reduced, the distance covered is again increases. If angle is still reduced, the distance covered will be again increases. There is a particular angle of incidence at which the distance covered is minimum. After that minimum angle, if angle is increased, the wave will escape. Distance covered will be more. And for the less than that angle of incidence, again distance covered will be more. So that is the minimum angle for which the distance covered is minimum. That is the particular angle of incidence for which the distance covered is minimum. So this is the wave. 
which are representing wave number 3 look at here so for this particular angle we are going to locate for which the distance covered is minimum this is the minimum distance after that for ray number 1 2 6 5 4 angle of incidence will play vital role to increase the distance conversely we can say for ray number 1 look at here for ray number 1 angle of incidence is the minimum distance covered will be more for ray number 2 for the, this ray angle is increased distance covered is decreased for ray number 3 angle is further increased distance covered is decreased for ray number 6 angle is further increased but distance covered is now increased for 5 and 4 angle is much more they will escape the ionospheric layer ray number 3 is the only ray that will produce the minimum distance and that minimum distance is known as skip distance the distance from the transmitter <coughs> to the point where wave is received back on the earth becomes smaller further reducing the angle of incidence increasing the distance between transmitting and receiving antenna of the point if the angle is further increased wave penetrates and lost as a microwave the distance from the transmitter to the point at which the sky wave of given frequency will return to the earth by ionosphere layer is known as skip distance the frequency that makes given receiving point corresponds to the distance from transmitter equal to skip distance is maximum usable frequency the frequency for which we can get the skip distance that frequency we can call it as it is a maximum usable frequency MUF again I will repeat try to understand if you consider ray number 1 so this is the ray number 1 for this ray this is the angle of incidence this is the minimum angle of incidence for this distance covered is much more for ray number 2 if you take this angle is further increased if angle is increased distance covered is decreased this is the distance covered for ray number 3 now consider angle is increased no doubt about that but the distance covered is only this much for ray number 6 angle is further increased but instead of decreasing the distance distance covered is increased that is the difference after further increasing angle they will escape into the free space there is a particular angle for ray number 3 for which the distance covered is the minimum before this the angle which is less than this distance covered will be more the angle which is more than this also distance covered will be more <coughs> <coughs> This is the particular angle for which the distance covered is minimum. So that distance we can call it as it is a skip distance. The transmitted frequency that makes that particular angle for which the distance covered is the minimum, that particular frequency we can call it as it is a maximum usable frequency. Till and until transmitter emits the maximum usable frequency know that particular angle of incidence is satisfied at that situation only we can get the skip distance before that angle before that maximum usable frequency and after that angle we can't get the skip distance so that's how we can say the distance from the transmitter to the point at which the sky wave of given frequency will return to the earth from the ionospheric layer and that is known as skip distance so that's what is represented and this skip distance can be calculated as d skip equal to 2 times h into square root of f square c upon f square m minus 1 fm is the maximum usable frequency 
fc is the critical frequency and h is the virtual height which we have seen just now it is the height which is more than the actual height height of the ionospheric layer which is more than that of actual height that is called as the virtual height h is the virtual height fc is the critical frequency fm is maximum usable frequency for maximum usable frequency only we can get the skip distance and that's why that skip distance can be calculated as d skip equal to 2 times h into square root of fc square upon fm square minus 1 <clears throat> at a point beyond the skip distance the receiver can receive the energy on a several paths corresponds to the difference hoops wave reaching to the single hoop carries the more energy increase in order of hoop reduces the strength of energy a wave tangents to the ground at a transmitter covers the maximum distance within a single hoop so this is what a single hoop it is represented it will cover some more energy if number of hoops increases those hoops are taken up only energy carried by those hoops will be less if it is converted three hoops like this then energy cover will be further decreases <coughs> beyond the skip distance this may be possible if the energy covered beyond the skip distance by single hoop okay it's all right you can get the maximum free strength. If it is covered by two hoops, the energy will be less. Friends, that's all about the meaning of skip distance. Student friends, here we are completing our third topic. That is antenna and radio wave propagation. Next time, we will meet with next topic. That is radio receiver and television. As already I told you that <coughs> on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, again I will going to give you three online lectures one after the another. Please go through that and if any difficulties you are going to, you will face, please contact me either by mobile phone or by mail or in the department. We'll meet in the next online lecture on Thursday.